what we have to start at the very basics, what is resistance? So essentially, it, resistance is when infection no longer responds to an antibiotic treatment. That's the basic definition of what resistance is. You can also say when infectious agent, which we call a pathogen, no longer responds to antibiotic treatment. So you can talk about the infection, the person who's infected, the infection being resistant, or the agent, the bacteria usually being resistant. So if we look at resistance, so let's say you unfortunately cut your finger and you got this cute little cell in there, this bacteria, which is going to find itself in a nice warm environment with lots of food. Well, what's going to happen is that bacteria is going to start to grow and divide and make more and more and more bacteria. So at this point, your finger is going to start to uh, show signs of infection. Usually it's red and warm, et cetera. Your immune response has started reacting. And you might go to a doctor because, say, I got a problem with my finger. Well, the doctor then might give you an antibiotic, shown here. The antibiotic then, depending on what type of antibiotic, usually you take it orally, it will go through the bloodstream, it'll eventually get to your finger, and it will interact with the bacteria. And then one of two things happens. In this example, the bacteria are gonna to start to die. So they start to disappear. So the infection starts to go away. But there's this guy here. That one is still remaining. That one is an antibiotic resistant bacteria. It essentially doesn't care. It sees the antibiotic, it's there, but it doesn't interact with the cell in the same way. That cell then, now everybody else is dead, this cell can start to grow and divide and you start to get more and more bacteria again. So that's one way in which resistance can arise. The cell either pre-existing or is um, evolved to resistance during an infection. So that's our first definition, what is resistance? Now I want to change a little bit and talk about how serious is this problem? Because we see a lot of scary headlines about a lot of things. But I'm going to give you a few examples here, and I'll talk more next week. Here's a quote from the UK, from the chief medical officer, who said that modern medicine, as we know it, if we don't halt the rise of resistance, will be finished. And I'll go into more what she means here. And the WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, said Without urgent coordinated action, the world is headed for a post-antibiotic era in which common infections and minor injuries, which has been treatable for decades, once again can kill. So these are two very reliable sources that sound very scary. There was an estimate made a few years ago about the number of deaths due to antibiotic resistance we could expect in the future. And shown here is the number of deaths now due to antimicrobial resistance. I'll come back to that definition in a few minutes. About 700,000 is the estimate, but this is a low estimate because many parts of the world, we don't have good data about this. You can compare that to, for example, cancer, which is about 8 million, and then these other diseases here. They made a calculation that by the year 2050, if nothing is done, and that's a key phrase there, if nothing is done, they estimate that the number of deaths due to antimicrobial resistance will rise to 10 million per year. So this, again, is a very scary number. Uh, some, I'm going to give you a few other examples. In... Southeast Asia, it's estimated that 98,000 newborns die each year due to bloodborne infections from resistant bacteria. 
In the EU, it's estimated that there are about 25,000 deaths per year due to antibacterial resistance at a cost of 1.5 billion euros. So it's an expensive problem as well. In Sweden, we are relatively well off as far as uh, antibiotic resistance. Uh, we have good health care, etc. But even in Sweden, if you look at, uh, this is one type of resistance called ESBL, which you'll hear much more about soon. Uh, between 2000 and 2015, you can see that the numbers are rising rapidly. And this little star here means that in 2015, there were actually 43 cases in Sweden of so-called ESBL carba, which is resistant to yet another antibiotic that is a last resort antibiotic. So this looks very, this numbers are very low, but the pattern is scary. So what does it mean if we don't have antibiotics? I mean, uh, you can imagine you probably, your finger would probably be okay if you got an infection like that most of the time, et cetera. But a lot of modern medicine depends on the use of antibiotics. So if we start just with quote unquote regular infections, like urinary tract infections. This is uh, one of the primary reasons that people in Sweden would get an antibiotic. It's a huge, um, it's a very common infection. But then you have gonorrhea, pneumonia. Gonorrhea is already has a completely drug-resistant variant uh, in the world. Pneumonia, wound infection, blood infections. But then in more modern technology, you have things like treatment of preterm babies. You need a lot of technology that exposes them to a lot of infection and need antibiotics. Hip replacements, for example, Inf um, infections are common and antibiotics are used. Complicated deliveries of uh, babies, organ transplants, cancer treatment, etc. So a lot of different kinds of treatments uh, depend on the availability of antibiotics to be able to treat, to be able to, to be available. So now I have a little thought question for you. They'll let you take a minute to discuss with your neighbor. How did antibiotic resistance become such a problem? Based on what you know already, what do you think? So discuss for a minute and I'll take a few suggestions and then I'll show you my list. There are a lot of opinions about this question. There's no right and wrong answer. I have my own personal list of the top reasons. First, and, and you'll hear much more about this throughout the course, overuse or misuse of antibiotics, absolutely, both in people and animals. Uh, and cleverness should be in quotes. I don't mean they're really clever, but I mean they have ways to evolve to become resistant, and that can happen very rapidly. And then the lack of antibiotic drug development. So for me, these are the three top reasons, and many of what you said fit into one of these three. So overuse also, um, underuse or misuse would also apply there, as well as um, dumping it into the environment is also a big problem. So you will hear much, much more about these and other points. The good news, though, now that I've depressed you on a Monday night, um, the good news is things are changing. Researchers worldwide are focusing more and more on this problem. The center I mentioned only was created uh, four years ago, but there are a lot of people working on this now here and other places. Efforts are being made to change policies, so decreasing the amount of dumping in the environment, for example, uh, and overuse of antibiotics in general. And then this course was created because we want to spread awareness. We want to let people know about this problem and give you ideas of what you can do or what you can support 
your politicians from doing. Another piece of good news is this. I showed this graph a few minutes ago, and it's ESBL in Sweden. Here, you, know, you can barely see this. I'll draw it for you. Since 2015, it's a straight line. In other words, this didn't keep going up, 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 as this implied. But actually, do, it, probably the reasons for this are very complex. But the rise of this superbug, as we call it, has actually leveled off in Sweden. And this is due to a lot of different uh, changes in treatment and policies. So things like this are getting better um, sometimes, but in some countries. All right, then before I pause, I want to uh, point out one thing that I mentioned, which is antimicrobial resistance. Antimicrobial resistance is a broader term. It includes bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. So all small things, basically. This course is only about bacteria. It's antibiotic resistance. So it only is um, looking at resistance in bacteria like tuberculosis, MRSA, which you may have heard of, E. coli, gonorrhea, et cetera. It could be a whole nother course to talk about resistance to parasites and malaria and things like that. But I just want to make sure the two terms are clear. So in this uh, today and uh, next week, I'm going to talk about these things. I'm going to start with the basic questions. What are bacteria? What are antibiotics? How do antibiotics treat infections? How do we find new antibiotics? What is the resistance? How does resistance occur? And how is it spread? And this is all the questions you will get answers to in the next two weeks, tonight and next week.